أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين إنه خير ناصر ومعين ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وخاتم النبيين وسيد المرسلين أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين ولعنة الله الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين My respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam and Iman, Salamun alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To begin this fourth majlis of the month of Muharram, I would ask you to attract the special attention of the Ahlul Bayt with a loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Before I begin with the topic for tonight, once again, as a means of inspiration, I just wanted to mention an anecdote from the life of our ulama who dedicated their lives towards serving the cause of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. One of these ulama was somebody named Sayyid Qadi Tabatabai. Sayyid Qadi was the teacher of some of our greatest ulama that you definitely have heard of and benefited from. Alama Muhammad Hussein Tabatabai, the famous commentator who wrote Tafsir al-Mizan, his teacher, when he came to the path of the spirituality of the Ahlul Bayt was Sayyid Qadi. Ayatullah Bahjad, Marhum Rahmatullahi Alayhi, his teacher, when it came to the path of the Ahlul Bayt the path towards Allah, was Sayyid Qadi Tabatabai. Now one of the, when you look at his life and see what is it that made him such a successful person, how is he able to reach these high levels of proximity to Allah and proximity to the Ahlul Bayt we see that one of the factors in his success was his devotion to Imam Hussain He would tell his students that do not let a week pass by without having a majlis of Imam Hussein in your home. Even if there's two or three people, let this be a tradition that you keep alive. And especially during the 10 days of Muharram, go and participate in the majlis of the month of Muharram. He would tell his students that if anybody wants to achieve any success on the path towards Allah, they cannot do so except with the special attention of Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. Now, this is coming from somebody who himself had achieved success on that path towards Allah, towards perfection, towards servitude. So he's speaking from experience, he's saying that it cannot be done without the special attention of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. They say that his love of Imam Hussein was so great that. He would have majalis, he would invite people to his home and of course when they would come in they would take off their shoes before going in and sitting at the majlis. Now while people were busy after the majlis, you know, having tea, um, talking and catching up, he would secretly go out and go to where the shoes are. There 
he would make sure to first of all arrange them in such a way that everyone leaving the shoes are pointing exactly in the direction that they need to point so they can leave. But not only that, this elderly scholar, this mujtahid, this ayatullah, this great, the, uh, this person who was greatly revered in the society, he would bend down and with his very aba, he would wipe the shoes of the mourners of Abu Abdullah Hussain Once they saw him doing that, they said that, Oh Allah, how can you lower yourself like this? You're a, an esteemed person. You're an elderly man. Let somebody else do this. He said that, no, I want to show Allah. I want to demonstrate to him that in my heart, I am truly a follower of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. The topic that we have been speaking about in the course of these nights has been towards an Islamic lifestyle, lessons from the ziyara of Ashura. What we're trying to do is to derive some practical lessons for leading our lives. What can we do to live Islamically? What can we do to have an Islamic lifestyle? And in the course of the last couple of nights, we've derived some powerful lessons on what we can do, how can we actually act upon them. Tonight I want to cover another line from the Ziyarah of Ashura and see what sort of powerful lesson we can derive from that that we can act upon in our lives. The line is the following. After we say salam to Imam Hussain in the Ziyarah and after we distance ourselves from those who oppressed him, then in the text of the Ziyarah we make a dua. Now this du'a is a very short du'a, but it conveys world Allahumma, Allahumma ja'alni indaka wajihan bil Husayni alayhi salam fi dunya wal akhirah. O oh Allah, make me distinguished with you in your presence through Hussein in the world and the hereafter. Just a few words, but so much meaning in them. One of the lessons we take from this is what does it mean to be a successful person in the eyes of the Ahlul Bayt This dua epitomizes the definition of success. Somebody who wants to be successful is somebody who is distinguished in the eyes of Allah. Oh Allah, Make me waji, make me somebody who is distinguished with you through Hussein. In order to understand this word waji, to be distinguished, we can take an analogy. Imagine that you have a king in a land. The king has many subjects that he governs, but there's a few of them who are the distinguished ones. There are a few of them who attract his special attention. He invites them to the palace. He has special meetings with them. He gives them as, and makes them be examples for the rest of the kingdom. These are the people who are distinguished in that kingdom. We tell Allah in this ziyara that, Oh Allah, make me distinguished with you. Allahumma j'anni indaka wajihan bil Hussein, But make it through Hussein in this world and the hereafter. What I'd like to talk about is this concept of being successful. Brothers and sisters, we're living in a society which has a very specific definition for what it means to be successful, that in some ways runs diametrically opposed to the Islamic definition of success. When we live in a society where the majority of people do not believe in God, or if they believe in God, it's not something which has any practical impact on their lives. Then what that means is their definition of success is going to be something which has God absent from the picture. When you go out in the real world, when you start to go into university and you start thinking about a career, there's a lot of pressure out there. Pressure to succeed. What is success? Success is making it big. If the only thing that exists in this world is matter, is the physical world, 
then obviously the one who is successful is the one who has more of it. There are those who have and there are those who don't have. If you make it big, you're successful. But if you don't make it big, then you're not considered to be successful. You're a failure. Yeah, it might seem like a shallow understanding of what it means to be successful, but practically speaking, it's something that we face head on when we're part of this. What is it that Islam gives us as a definition of success? What is it that we can derive from this line of the ziyarah of Ashura? Once, the Prophet Ibrahim السلام, was looking in the mirror. He saw that after many years of living in this world, he had passed through his childhood, he had passed through his youthful ages, he had started his middle ages, and finally it came to the point where he's looking at the mirror and he sees that his hair has turned gray. Now most people, when that first sight of gray hair is shown to them, it's a bit of a depressing scene. It's as if, okay, now it's pretty much, we're going downhill now, there's only a little bit of time left, left, and then it's gonna be over. But look at what it is that Nabi Ibrahim السلام, says when he sees that gray hair. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Allahi Nabi Ibrahim السلام, looks at his life at this point and he is very happy that he has been successful. What is his definition of success? He says, all praise belongs to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, who has caused me to arrive at this age and I have not even for a moment disobeyed him. For him, the definition of being a successful person is that not even a moment has he disobeyed Allah. What a beautiful understanding of success. This is what gives Nabi Ibrahim some happiness at this point. No, there's no sort of depression, no sort of sadness. He's very happy and charged that at this point he has that type of lifestyle and that is his definition of success. In a tradition, our Prophet is reported to have said, "In Allah Ta'ala yubahi bishab al-abid al-malaika. Allah brags or shows off to the angels when he sees a young person who is engaged in worshipping him. He says, "Unzuru ila abdi taraka shahwatahu min ajli. Look at my servant. He's a young person. This is the time when most people in this world are engaged in pursuing their lusts. They're hungry after the dunya. But he is somebody who has left aside pursuing those lusts which are haram for my sake. Now brothers and sisters, what we're seeing from these stories and from that line from Ziyarah of Ashura is that Islam gives us a definition of success which is very clear. It's what is it that we can do to be in high standing with Allah? That's what's gonna make me happy versus not happy. But the problem is that when we take that and we go to the real world, oftentimes we're facing situations where we're forced to make tough choices. Should we live up to that standard of trying to do whatever it is that God wants? Or should we be part of this rat race and be hungry for the dunya. This hunger for the dunya is something which can be a plague for many. We see it out there. We ourselves can be susceptible towards being affected by it. There's a very strong example we have from Karbala regarding somebody who was hungry for the dunya. Umar ibn Sa'ad la'anatullahi alayhi was somebody who should have known better he was the son of a famous companion.